I guess I'll start us off. Hello. Welcome to the CCS. I am here. I am Chelsea, joined by Redacted, I believe. That's right. Casting um, Team Death Realm versus Crosspoint Origin. Okay. How, how are you doing, Redacted? How are you feeling about this matchup? I'm feeling pretty good. You know, it's, both these teams are unfortunately at the bottom of the ladder right now, uh, looking for their first match win. So I'm expecting to see a very contested um, game between both of these teams here. Yeah, 100%. As we're already getting into the ban phase, um, Team Death Realm on the blue side already starting off with the B1 Corky ban, answered quickly by Crosspoint Origin with the Jinx. Oh. Yeah, Jinx is a highly contested pick as both of these teams do play the Jinx. So, you know what? Let's just go ahead and shorten down the ADC pool by getting rid of her so that it's just one less ADC that neither side can play. So I'm curious to see what TDR is going to ban here next with the Mordekaiser ban. Okay. Yeah, Mordekaiser top lane ban. Definitely sort of seldom see those in the first phase unless it's sort of a target ban that you're trying to take away. You know, mm -hmm. Crossfight Origin do have that red side, have that R5. So if they want a good top lane matchup, they can certainly secure it for themselves. But Team Death Realm don't want that Mordekaiser going anywhere. Also, technically, it is a jungle flex if you're feeling very, very <laughs> spicy. But uh, yeah, good old Mordekaiser jungle, you know, just watching him waddle through as he walks up to your lane to hit you with his giant mace. <laughs> Aphelius ban coming out next here, though. So that's three marksmen now that we have seen banned. Oh, the Vigar ban. Wow. Three is a little bit of a stretch. Quirky is really being only seen in the context of being that um, sort of poke style build mm -hmm. with the um, Miramana, the Ludens, and the Ravenous Hydra, I think. While the auto attack Quirky build is still strong, I don't think. Um, it's one as easy to pilot and two as popular right now. But you see the Vigar and the Lux being taken away by a side of Crossfight Origin, getting away from those control mages. Vigar, however, more seen as a mid laner and a bot laner, whereas Lux sort of been relegated to support duty. But even with the Lux gone, we see the Caitlyn blind first pick for D Team Death Realm trying to get that early bot lane prior. And it's Andrew quickly on the other side by Crosspoint with the Orn and the Morgana. Yeah, absolutely. That Caitlyn, you know, with the Lux ban. So as soon as Team Death Row picked up the Caitlyn there, you you know with Lux being banned, all right, they might take the Morgana. So it looks like uh, Crosspoint Origin just don't want to give that co uh, combo to Team Death Row. So they're just going to go ahead and take the Morgana off of Team Death Row's hands. And, you know, that Mork could still go in the mid lane, highly unlikely, but uh, it'll more likely to be support. But we'll see as the rest of this draft rounds out. With the Gwen and Karma coming out for Team Death Realm next, and an Ash pick for Crosspoint Origin, so lots of CC. Yeah, lots of CC indeed with this Orn and this Morgana and this Ash. I'm really curious to see like a thought process behind um, R winning that Orn. Definitely looking to save the counter pick um, for mm -hmm. Crosspoint Origin for the mid laner most likely. Um, on the other side, Team Death Realm getting the Gwen, which is a you know, one, a very powerful pick, and two, a flex for top jungle. I assume the Gwen just goes into the Orn. Um, you know, assuming it's Orn top, this Gwen, you know, has a really easy time cutting down that Orn with true damage and percent health to max magic damage. That's a good matchup for Team Death Realm already. And picking up the Karma into the Morgana, definitely a known counter pick in the bot lane. This Caitlyn Karma lane will have so much prior over the wave, so much shove. Yes, Crosspoint Origin did get the Ash, which is historically a lane that can neutralize Caitlyn. You know, these Ash, Jin, Varus, these type of utility ADs that sort of neutralize the early game pressure that um, Caitlyn can put out. The problem is that Ash just isn't exactly in the best spot right now. So I'm sure Team Death Realm very, very happy with how this draft has gone already. Yeah, absolutely. Just on that Ash point there, we haven't seen her really in ages. So it's gonna. I'm very curious as to see how Crosspoint Origin will play around their bot lane or if they're even going to play for their bot lane. They might just leave them on the island because Ash will naturally skill and as well as the Morg, she'll still be able to put down some damage. And I think we're already getting our answers <laughs> here with the jack that beam. is yeah oh so we have to assume that one of these is going jungle right i think it would be kind of troll to play orner jack's mid 
actually blind. Um, I've seen both of these picks pulled out in the jungle. I've seen Orn more recently jungle. I feel like Jack's jungle was more of a you know season five, season six. Yeah, it's like, that's a while ago. <laughs> that's, that's a that's a long time ago. We see the Vex locked in from Team Death Row once they're blind mid. But co going back to this Orn and Jax, I assume. It makes more sense to pick up this Orn if you're going to send it into the jungle. You know, it would make sense suddenly instead of r one your top laner, you're r one your jungle, and you're getting mm -hmm. a much better matchup into the Gwen if it goes into the top lane with the Jax. A problem is this Gwen doesn't have to go into the top lane. We'll see if Team Death Realm choose to opt into the Gwen flex. Mm -hmm. I think Crosspoint Origin were at least anticipating it with the Shen ban, but no, that's going to be a drive and locked in, so... Either Team Death Realm has the read that it's Jack's jungle, or they have the read that this Gwen will just win into the Jacks anyway. Picking up the Jarvan for some of that early game pressure, that gank setup, you know, especially when you have a prior lane in this Caitlyn Karma, having a Jarvan that can be unlocked to either play for dives or even play for the rest of the map is a very powerful tool. And hold on, that's a Sona. So, Something's not adding wait, up here. Wait, 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 what is going on here? So... This is this is weird because I feel like it's a quadruple flex. <laughs> uh, you know, you can either have Jack's top, Jack's jungle, Morg mid, Morg support, Sona mid, Sona um, support. So I'm very curious as to see where these champions are going to end up when we actually get into the client and in game. So this will be very interesting. But what do you think so far, Chelsea, about where uh, these champions might end up for the tide of crossplay origin? What is the most optimal way to do this? It's there's the angle where it's Morgan or jungle, right? And then you're putting your oh, Orner, I mean... your you're putting your Orner, your Jack solo lane mid. I think that's bad. Maybe you can get away with like Orn into Vex. I feel like Vex doesn't exactly like know what to do into Orn. I don't think her base damages are high to high enough to thread in that Orn. The other problem, though, is that means you have an Orn mid, which sounds really bad. So I think yeah. this Morgana is going to be going to the mid lane. I think Jax is going to be going to the top lane just based on, like, being picked up at that R4. Actually, mm -hmm. if they're going to do it to stop the Gwen, I would have picked it R5 personally. But we'll see. Um, probably Morgana in the mid lane, Jax in the top lane, Orn in the jungle. I, I don't see the Sona going anywhere but support, so... Yeah, well, well, we will definitely have to see. Um, I mean, right now, as the champions are being locked in, we see Orn in the top, Jax jungle, Gwen top, Jarvin jungle. But you never know. Once all these picks are locked in, there could be some trades. So I'm very, uh, I'm very curious, and like I'm excited now because this is a very unconventional draft that we've seen from the side of uh, Crosspoint Origin, and you know, it could it could go one of two ways. This could go either really good for them, or it could literally crash and burn and they can just land on their face so yeah i mean definitely good to see some of these bottom of the table teams sort of shaking things up in the draft i don't necessarily know if this is how i would have shaken it up but you know <laughs> maybe they know something i don't that that's always the attitude you have to have going into these types of things as mm -hmm. you know maybe I, there's an ash patch coming out that or an ash buffer coming out but they're just you know a patch early or something who knows <laughs> I <laughs> did get buffed recently on the patch. It, I, I'd call it less of a buff and more of an adjustment. They oh. increased her uh, the missile speed of her R scaling over distance. They did. That's right. That was on this most recent patch, I believe, right? It was. Obvious. The problem is, a lot of the time, you're not going to be going for those um, cross-map um, Ash plays. So mm -hmm. a lot of the times, your Ash ult is going to come out slower at the same speed as it did if you're going for those more reliable engages, which mm -hmm. looking at your team, you do want to be using Ash Alt as sort of your primary engage, you know, mm -hmm. dropping the Ash Alt around the same time as the Orn Alt comes out and then uh, using R2 of Orn onto the backline of um, Team Death Realm. We'll, we'll see. It might, it might make it a little difficult. It might make it a little easier depending on how Ranger 24 on this Ash plays. Yeah. I mean, you... oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, go ahead and finish your statement. And then I was going to uh, say something. Yeah. It's like looking at these lane by lanes, it does look like this is going to be the Orn in the top lane, mm -hmm. which I feel like is kind of never punished for Team Death Realm. Uh, really locking in that Gwen into the top lane and, I don't know, 
I mean, Crosspoint do have a Jax, but <laughs> maybe it's, you know, champion pool, comfort issues. Does feel kind of bad, though, you know, having that really powerful matchup in the top lane and also in the bot lane. But we'll see. Maybe Morgana mid is a sleeper vex counter that we never knew we needed. <laughs> I mean, she does have that black shield, you know, Morg. I mean, Vex doesn't really shove lane as much, so I don't actually see her winning necessarily the early game matchup. So the Morg, I can see the Morg more than likely being able to get the push onto the Vex. Um, in terms of damage output, though, Vex obviously is more of a burstier mage than Morg, which is more you know damage over time. Um, so I'm very, I'm very curious as to see how this mid lane matchup will shape up and how the mid jungle synergy will actually match up as well because it's actually like for crosspoint origin their um their synergy is pretty pretty standard you know as long as morgana lands the uh stun there Jax jumps in and then he has his stun as well on his e so it could be a pretty dangerous lane for this vex so she's gonna have to keep her eyes open and wards on point yeah, definitely agree. I also want to go back to the point you talked about damage. I'm looking at Crosspoint Origins team, and I wonder, who does damage? Mm. And then I realize I can't exactly answer that question, because Ash doesn't deal damage. Um, if you go shield bow Ash, because of the shield bow with send nerfs a few mm -hmm. patches ago or so, you're griefing. If you're playing Kraken Slayer Ash into this comp, you are not going to have a very fun time. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. You can go Gale Force Ash, I guess. Maybe. Are you going to deal damage? Probably not. And your mid laner is a Morgana who's... I mean, she has good CC. Her W gets really annoying, especially if layered on top of um, Leandri's Torment, but, mm -hmm. you know, that's not, you know, compare that to, like, the damage that a Vex is putting out. That's yeah. not very, you know, that's not even a close comparison. You have this Jax who's probably going to deal damage eventually, but then mm -hmm. you're playing Jax into, like, Karma Caitlyn Vex, which sounds really not fun. Jack's not known for his teamfight prowess, so... And then you yeah. have an Orin and a Sona who are really good facilitators. Sona healing up the entire team, and Orin, you know, layering CC, providing frontline, but what are you mm -hmm. providing this frontline for? You just drafted more utility champions, so... Unless this Jax gets perma ahead and can 1v9, I'm really favoring Team Deathrealm here. Okay. I mean, I definitely can see that. I was going to say that, uh, I was just going to refute your point just a little bit about, you know, them uh, CPO not dealing damage. They do deal damage. It's just not in the way we think, you know, it's more so damage over time versus compared to like the more bursty or flashier side of a uh, Team Death Realm there, right? Like you could see Team Death Realm definitely bursting out the Ash or the Sona or the more pretty quickly like if she lands on a caitlin trap and then gwen comes in j4 uses cataclysm and whatnot and they just blow up these champions so um basically what i'm saying is i i'm seeing cpo um crosspoint origin they definitely want to play a more 5v5 front to back uh lineup and that's going to require a lot of communication and uh, synergy and you know patience really so yeah definitely as we are going to get into game in a quick second, um, I believe we are going to throw to a very, very short intermission, though. If I recall correctly. Yes. So, we will see you guys. Hold on! <laughs> I'm about to say something really cool. Three, forty-one, nine, and lift off! No one dies screaming without me! I feel like I forgot to shoot something. You're starting to bore me. She's such a loser, always ready to cry. Da, 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 da. Ah, come on. What's the worst that could happen?
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Summoner's Rift as we get into game one of Crosspoint Origin versus Team Death Realm. And already we get some level one action. Team Death Realm, five players strong, walking into the top lane, looking for a pick onto Gobi on this Orn. Hugging the wall. Very good invade etiquette as. TDR, Mr. Potato's oh, yeah, going to walk here, into here the bush. Orin spotted out. That's the RQ from Karma. There's not going to be enough CC though. The Vex Spear coming in very late. No summoner spell is going to be burned. Guster Posey on the Morgana going to get that Dark Binding as Team Death Realm walk out with a chunked Orin and a ward. Yeah, and I just want to say there, uh, Chelsea, that you know, Gobi was very lucky that he didn't blow his flash, he didn't lose his life, so I see that as a win for Crosspoint Origin, like, despite the fact that he had to recall, memes aren't even up yet, so, so far, um, you know, it's still about an even trade for both teams, so, I guess Team the Death one Realm thing didn't really get any get an advantage or anything like that. I guess the one thing to note is that, um, because of the invade, um, Gobi did start E on the Orin, I actually Correct. do not... I don't think that's what you're supposed to start. Then again, I have not touched top lane with a 10-foot pole, so, <laughs> you know, I could be wrong on that. One thing I do know is that Guster Posey did start the Q on the Morgana, and I feel like playing Morgana into Vex, he would want to start that Tormented Soul to get that push advantage that Morgana mm -hmm. in this lane should have. So not having that, I know, is definitely not ideal for this side of Crosspoint Origin, both teams sort of trading wards on either side of the map. And both junglers starting on the side of that vision. So with a bit of infant skills, I'm sure that both teams have an idea of where, you know, which side is being passed to from each team. Yeah, definitely not ideal. Back to your Morgana point there, first starting with the Q. But I mean, it's not detrimental as, you know, once she gets level two, she can have that on. And then she just has to watch herself be staying behind the means and whatnot as to make sure the Vex doesn't really poke her down until she gets level 3 and that black shield is up, so she yeah, should be okay. Them. But this bot, these bot laners are definitely poking each other out, and that's what I want to see from the Caitlyn um, Karma lane there. You know, definitely abuse and punish this Ash Sona lane here. Yeah, Caitlyn Karma definitely demonic on the wave. We saw Karma probably as a counter pick into the Morgana. I assume Team Death Realm thought it would be a Morgana support. And it's a mm -hmm. good adaptation to send the Morgana mid lane. We see the fight coming in. Caitlyn looking to trade with the EQ. Taking the E second instead of traps. Bit of an interesting decision, but nonetheless, Caitlyn's still getting the shove on the wave. But we saw cross points go for the, you know, the bait and switch for the counter pick. Except they bait and switch into a Sona, which I feel like still <laughs> loses the Karma. Yes, Sona, obviously, late game scaling champion, has a lot of healing, right? But I feel like it does not mitigate the problems of this lane. And yeah, and check out J4 waiting in that bush there. Yeah, we see, looking at the wave state, it's gonna slowly slow push towards the side of Team Death Realm, but Jarvan does not have the time nor resources to um, you know, afford to stay in that bot push, especially as you know he was or sitting on a ward that was recently placed, that has been placed over the wall by Arrow Cross or Ranger 24. So Jarvan just gonna walk into the jungle, get a bit of vision slash control, and get his reset off. No gank gonna come out from the side of Team Death. Realm. Yeah, absolutely. As um, we watch our jungles pathing here, we see Jack still getting his first a, a full clear of both sides of his jungles, and then I expect to see him more than likely. Either look for a gank on the Gwen here as it looks like she is pushing up into Gobi there. Or, um, you know, I see Warhead either looking for that gank or he's going to recall, you know, get some items. And then uh, probably start at his Gromp there and more than likely look for a gank on this bot lane of Team Death Realm here. As they are very aggressive on the side of this Ash Sona uh, combo. So, I'm very curious as to see where Warhead will make path next and you see the trap next though. Would be. you see the eq auto flash forward from tdr mr potato misses the q though that's not gonna be killed going down onto arrow cross and suddenly mm -hmm. ranger 24 on the ash is gonna look for the turn flashes for flash. though on the other side oh. rusher lol gets two kills picked up ranger 24 looking too far forward for too little tdr mr potato escapes by the skin of his teeth and that is gonna be the 2v2 that team death realm drafted for 
Yeah, absolutely. And team Crosspoint Origin just a little bit too early on their aggressiveness there as unfortunately Jax was on his way to, you know, more than likely help him out, but they just got caught out by the side of Rusher and Mr. Tate there, and unfortunately, Ranger wasn't able to get something back as he was trying really hard, but wasn't able to just burst out that Caitlyn as well. That early game Ash damage, you like you said, <laughs> what damage is Ash doing? <laughs> Yeah, so you see the CS gap in the bot lane has already grown. Um, 41 farm for Rusher Lol on this Kate. Going to come back to lane with an extra pair of boots and a dagger, as well as starting the D Blade over the Longsword Ranger 24, only able to pick up that new quiver that he has because he started with the Longsword. Having that component there reduces, you know, the gold you need to get that new quiver. So. Very lucky for him as he was able to get enough gold before he died to get that, but Rusher Law still hasn't sold the D-Blade. So in terms of effective stats, this Caitlyn is just going to be so much stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you see maybe a fight in the top lane. TDR Nemesis going to pop the needlework. Conqueror stack is proc. Gobi going to flash away. Pops the R, but it's going to get there enough. TDR Nemesis nips the wrong way and he is going to be killed. Gobi. Picking up a free donation in the top lane, TDR Nemesis just did not have the hands to aim properly, I guess? I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Probably wanted to queue up a move command after the Q, but just, I, I don't know what else to say. Don't do that and you probably get a kill or you don't die or literally anything. I'm not really sure. As Aerocross yeah. walking onto the trap, Blackboard from Rusher Lol gets the killing spree as that trap was in plain view there's not one of those fancy caitlin traps that you can do when you're playing red side <laughs> i know the turret can sometimes obscure where traps are that's not what happened that trap was chilling in the middle of the lane and walked on it maybe thought that caitlin wouldn't be able to auto from that range which is true but even in that early 2v2 rusher law did not proc the flashes and the mid lane, a bit of trading coming out from TDR Matt and Guster Posey. Yeah, lots of action going down on the rift here. As you can see, Chelsea, like so much action that like it's just been nonstop. Um, as we see Jax posturing here for this potential gang onto Nemesis, who once again Nemesis doesn't have flash, but with that ward being spotted out, Warhead will now uh Nemesis now knows that Warhead is up there, so he's gonna play a bit more safely. But um. Yeah, once again, I just want to talk about that um, fight we saw between the top laners there since we didn't get a chance to. But Nemesis, if he got that full max Q snip off onto Gobi there, he would have healed up a bit, plus the needlework, and he more than likely would have gotten that kill. So it was quite unfortunate that he aimed it the wrong way and wasn't able to secure that kill onto Gobi there. But that just works out in Orin's favor now. As you see right now, we see um, TDR Mr. Potato going in Roaming to the top side after that back, trying to secure the red buff for TSS in vain. Um, Rutger Lol, you know, three kills up, strong enough to sort of control the wave 1v2 with the 650 range on the Caitlyn. And as the Rift Herald spawned about 40 seconds ago, roaming this Karma up is going to secure map control. I think they might be spotted out by that ward in the pit though. So we'll see if Warhead 852 is gonna look for a cross map play. Um, TDR and Nemesis going for the 1v1 against Gobi. He is a level down. Does get the Conqueror proc though. Gobi's auto attacks are just dealing so much damage though. Not gonna go for the kill. Does have the needlework up if he wanted to look for it, but taking already a big chunk from the Bellows Breath as well. Not gonna be yeah, that was good gonna... for him. So you yeah, see the Orn R coming oh. out. Gobi looking for the kill. Gwen is immune. Dodges the R2 from the Orn. You have TDR Mr. Potato looking in for the counter ganker. I guess the gank, there is no jacks here, but we see the root coming out. Gonna be unstoppable by the Bella's breath. The end of the root is gonna hit. Needlework comes out. That's a two-man E for Gobi on the orb. We see a teleport from Guster Posey. Pops the black shield. That is gonna stop some damage, but TSS in vain gets the kill with the cataclysm. Guster Posey is trapped. The Morgana R, the soul stack, will get the stun. Is that gonna be enough gold in the bot lane? Though we see the Ash Arrow coming out is going to miss. Rusher Law with the sidestep going to survive in the 1v2 scenario. TDR Matt walking down to potentially get a gank onto the bot lane of Crosspoint Origins. He has that in, in vain and Mr. Potato. They are going to look for some plates. One kill, all in all, going over to the side of 
um, Team Death Realm. It's going to be a kill. I believe it went over, yes, to TS that's in vain. So it's not a kill on the Gwen or the Vex. Not, you know, who you want it to be on. But gold on the Jarvan can be transferred across the map very, very efficiently. So we'll see what they do with it. Yeah, absolutely. As once again, you know, they were able to put Gobi behind and transfer some of that early game advantage he had from getting that kill onto Nemesis earlier into the favor of the Gwen and Jarvan. Yes, Gwen didn't get the kill, but now Gobi isn't necessarily as at a strong position as he was previously, but he's getting some plates up here and, you know, and it looks like uh, Team Death Row are going to get this Drake here uncontested. So they got the Rift Hero and the Drake here as Crosspoint Orange are just a... They're foot back right now. They're playing a step back, you know, not as much tempo as they could possibly be paying it. Yeah, definitely. Um, Team Death Realm have full control of the map right now, roaming up Mr. Potato to get that play on the Rift Herald and in the top lane, and then just walking it straight down to the Drake on Warhead's reset timer. Just superior control of the map, superior early game play, and you know, with a comp, you know. That they've set up. We see the Attar though. It's going to be cleansed out. The flash is ulti from Sona. Warhead 852 is here. Gets the flash too. Stun goes down onto Mr. Potato. This could be a kill for the side of Crosspoint Origin. Warhead 852 is going to have the leap strike up soon. Going to hit onto Rector Law. The flash W from Ranger 24 isn't going to be enough to get the kill. It takes the two with the Cataclysm. And this Ash is flashing forward, but he cannot get anything this game. Arrow Cross going to limp away. TSS in vain, picking up his third kill of the fight. Guster Posey walks on the forward. Does not look for the play onto Mr. Potato. And it looks like a potential angle. Really good cleanse from Rusher Lol. Forces out the flash crescendo from Sona, but that all happened while Warhead wasn't in range to get any damage off, so. Yup. No, yup, just... and like you said, Chelsea, once again, Ash does no damage. This Ash Creek is really coming back to uh, bite Crosspoint Origin in the butt here as we know she's not an early game champion that can really do lots of um, consistent damage in the Fun. in the so early see a game, play coming you know? out that's gonna be a ghost from tdr nemesis looking to cut down gobi gets the cue this time actually hits the orange see rusher law is here too has the caitlin all the ace in the hole is going to be the nail in the coffin for gobi see gobi going down again after getting that first kill and this is all looking tdr right now yeah, TDR in complete control of the map right now with almost a um, 5k gold lead. It just looks like Crosspoint, every time they are, they try and make him play, like, it looks good, but TDR is just one step ahead of them and able to punish them for these misplays, unfortunately. And so I think TDR just oh, needs to take TDR, it a bit Mr. slow. Potato might have flown a little too close to the sun, <laughs> but actually he's fine. Warhead 852 just not going to be able to push in when he sees Rusher Lol. You know, so strong on this Caitlyn, just free hitting the turret. In vain is here. They could look for the dive. Look at all of that damage. Unstoppable on this Jarvan with. I believe he has the Gore Drinker already. Yes, yes. Athenly Ash Arrow does hit onto Mr. Potato. We see the Orn are coming through, but in vain. Flash is preemptive. Yes. Gets the dodge. And unstoppable from Rusher. Law the Caitlyn is going to free fire. Oh, Gobi going to get rooted up. Is that going to be a trap as well? The Jarvan E2. He can't even get to the trap. Oh my Double God. kill on the side of TDR. As TDR mad looking to kill Guster Posey. He does get rooted up. Guster Posey, however, did not have the Tormented Soul. Could not put it down to finish off the kill. As ooh, this is this is a bit graphic. This is domination across the map from the side of Team Death Realm. And Crosspoint Origin needs to make some sort of miracle play with this draft. I mean, this Ash has the Vampire Acceptor, right? So this is going to be a shield bow Ash. So we are going to deal no damage. That's just a fact of life yeah. that you are going to have to accept if you are the other four players on Team Death Realm. So you're really looking at this like Yandri's Morgana and maybe hoping that Team Death Realm has a dance party on the Tormented Soul Soil. Maybe Jax can do something. He does have his first item. He has the Blade of the Runes King. Um, going to be good into high health targets, which is exactly Jarvan, who to be fair is a 500 gold bounty if you are able to pick up that kill. But, you know, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. It's going to be really tough to pick up anything for the side of Crosspoint Origin right now. They're making this Caitlyn, you know, who typically has that mid-game um, 
I would say dip in terms of power look really strong right now. And she only has a Gale Force, a BF Sword, and the pickaxe there. Of course, with the boots and still, you know, the um, Duran's blade there. So, but 6 0 with a 600 gold bounty and just TDR just running crosspoint origin ragged right now and it's quite unfortunate because we we like we said earlier crosspoint origin need to scale and to do that you're not supposed to really give the other team a bunch of kills to accelerate them faster than you're supposed to uh be when you're ready to fight them but at this point now they're gonna need like they're gonna need a lot to just be able to have a chance to get back into this game as we, see the, chance, though, we see the orn ultimate gonna be flashed away the ashar goes wide again and that's two ultimates going down. The turret went down to the Rift Herald anyway. I guess no one on Crosspoint Origin remembered to hit that one. And suddenly there's a dragon up, and you have two of your most crucial teamfight ultimates down. And TDR still look healthy. They look happy. They have Karma to shield them all. However, the dragon's going to be started. Teleport coming out a little late from Matt. On this Vex, you see the Jarvis going over the wall. Oh, Sona all. It's going to hit onto Jarp. He still can't snipe while Sun's going to see fight coming out. Gwen looking to get this needlework. TDR and Matt already picked up Arrow oh. Cross <laughs> on the back side of the fight. Jarvan did go down. Kill was picked up by the Orn Warhead 852. Not able to pick up that shutdown onto the Caitlyn. And My even though the goodness. Dragon went down, all of Crosspoint Origin oh, yeah. cut down, shot down, and aced. 16 to 2 for the side of Team Death Realm. Yeah, um, I'm gonna call it. Nemesis laughing right there. <laughs> I, I, I'm calling this... I think Game 1's going to uh, Team Death Realm already. I, I'm not saying it's not possible for Crossbow Origin to get it back, but they're gonna need a Miracle and a Prayer and lots of picks. It's, I'm talking full Guerrilla Warfare at this point. You cannot 5v5 the side of TDR right now because you will not win. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a bold take, thinking that TDR is gonna win this one. Uh... They, they only have 16 kills in 17 minutes. They, they don't have a kill a minute. I I don't know, might be a bit too bold for me, but we have a 10K gold lead before 20 minutes. Um, it's just gonna come down to how quickly Team Death Realm can execute from this spot, because any team in the CCS should be able to win this game from this point. Um, what's gonna separate a good team from, uh, maybe not a good, a good team from a great team, let's say, is yeah. how quickly they're going to be able to end this and how cleanly they're going to be able to end this. How little room they're going to give Crosspoint Origin to play because mm -hmm. in no world should Crosspoint Origin been allowed to be anywhere near that dragon. It is practically criminal that they were allowed to pick that one up. So in games like these, I think for long-term health of the league, but we see actually the Astral going down onto TDR match. The Sun from Warhead 852 is not going to come in. The Counter-Strike did expire before the Leap Strike came through. And, oh, well, that was another Astral that didn't really result in anything. Yeah, maybe I got a little bit too ahead of myself there with the, you know, the prediction there, but what I'm getting at is basically like Team Death Room are just really far ahead right now. And, you know, their, um, their scaling is actually quite accelerated given the nature of the game so far and how many kills and just how correct and how much gold their champions have compared to the side of Crossbow Origin. So I'm I'm not saying that Crossbow Origin can't win the game. I'm just saying it's very hard right now for them to be in a position of strength or a position of an advantage to be able to, you know, take control back from the side of Team Death camp, though, here. TDR in vain and Matt on the control where Ranger 24 going to uh. have the shield bow pop. That was a really useful item that definitely saved him, and that's going to be the first kill for TDR and Matt. On the other side, though, TDR and Nemesis could be getting crossed now. Guster, Posey, and Warhead 852 are going to be here on the play. We see the Morgana shield looking yep. to stop some of that match damage. Gwen is not Ooh. immune enough to survive that. That is going to be a kill. Shutdown even picked up for Guster, Posey in the bot lane. On the other side of the map, can Team Death Realm get maybe an inhibitor to hurt. Maybe they can break open the base. Two members were sent bot lane. What is TDR going to get out of this? Caitlyn starting to fire upon the turret. Gobi and Aerocross here doing the best they can using these orn pillars to try and clear the way. But Rusher Lull is just standing still and clicking and that's going to be the turret going down. Walking forward now. Maybe walked a bit too forward. We see Gobi walking up. He does have the orn ultimate if it is needed. The enchanted crystal arrow is back up as well. 
but Team Death Row, I'm gonna make a clean escape, picking up the inhibitor turret for the shutdown on Gwen. Definitely good by them to cross map. If you are the side of Crosspoint Origin, however, you are happy. Your Morgana did pick up a really big shutdown, does have the Leandries, does have the Oblivion Orb, crucially for all the healing that's gonna be coming out of the Gwen, and oh, oh no, I, okay. So if we, if we hit tab here and we look at the items, we see an Infinity Edge for Rusher Lol. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look at all of the items that he has, he has Gale Force, mm -hmm. Infinity yep. Edge, and Zeal. Mm -hmm. Infinity Edge's passive triggers at 60% critical strike chance. He does not have 60% critical strike, and now I'm in physical pain seeing a second item, i.e. ADC, <laughs> going to win this game. I, alright, I wasn't gonna say anything. I saw the D-Blade start, I saw the fleet footwork, and I was like, that's bad. But, you know, maybe it's personal preference. I'm not gonna flame it. But I cannot let that, oh god, actually never punish this. TDR Mad looking for the play on War at 8-5-2. The Ak Arrow is gonna come down though. Warhead going to smack Matt up. Almost gonna be a kill. The Ak W does hit, not gonna deal any damage as Ak does. Ak blocking out of the Catapult. The Ornall is here. Rush and Roll legendary though, with his Infinity Edge yeah, picking up the kill onto Guster Post. TDR Mad flying back in with the Vex ultimate. Gwen is here, Gwen is immune, and it seems that Team Death Realm is going to win the fight. Another ace at 21 minutes, I assume. This is at least in Hibs, maybe even the game if they have enough pushing power. TDR Nemesis, um, Rusher Law, and Mr. Potato are here with the fight, and really just never punished for playing like this, huh? Okay? Nope, not yeah. at all. <laughs> never punished. Yeah. It doesn't, neither, it didn't look like either, whatever lanes to Crosspoint Origin tried to punish, Sans, you know, the Gwen kill at the beginning of the game, everything besides that has not really worked out in their favor. Yeah, they got a solo, um, they got a kill onto Gwen when she was pushing in, in the bot lane about 15, 10, 15 minutes ago, but it hasn't really, like, been... The, uh, hasn't been really favorable for Crosspoint Origin as they've tried to get back into this game, you know? The uh, TDR is just all over the map, running them ragged, and it's really hard for them to find any footing into this game right now. And I wanted to bring up that point. Uh, I think uh, Rusher just bought the IE there because he's so ahead. Uh, hold that thought, though. Ooh, we see maybe a pick on TSS in vain. Using the Morgana Q, using the Sona side, uh, ultimate, rather. Garvin stood still for a while because of CC. Stood on the tormented soil. He's not dead. He's killing Rusher Law though, walking way too far forward. Take the actual cleanse and it's gonna pick up the kill onto Ranger 24 and it's gonna gale for it. He's not punished for that. That's crazy. Absolutely yeah. sprinting it full force into the bot lane, but I guess it does not matter if your team is 13k gold up. Rusher Law going for the one for one. Um, Crosspoint maybe should have focused the 11 and 0 Caitlyn. It's maybe just a personal take by me, but you know, <laughs> but at that's what still cost? Gold. What do you it's... give up to get? What do you give up to kill the Caitlyn at this point? You know she's gonna have backup. Granted, they got lucky there by just killing Mr. Potato, but um, it's gonna be really hard to kill that Caitlyn because you know that more than likely the rest of uh, her squad is gonna be somewhere nearby as Nemesis is pushing in on the bot lane. They're creating pressure. So, I'm curious as to see if TDR is going to try and bait out this Baron again, or if they're going to push mid lane here. Yeah, we see the Baron was actually stopped by the side of Team Death Realm. Um, we're going to see how they plan to execute this play. They have more than enough gold and pressure to really do whatever they want, but we'll see yep. if what they want is going to get the kill. TDR Nemesis popping the needle, we're oh looking onto Rager 24, and oh maybe she's full health! Full health, TDR Nemesis doesn't oh. get the R3 onto Sona. <laughs> Could have potentially been a kill with the slow, but no, Ash is Ash is great. Great here. You see Rusher Law picking up the mid turret, going to get the E and the Q onto Guster Posey as now there are no turrets besides the next turrets for the side of Crosspoint Origin. Surely Team Deathrun will be able oh, to execute, they got but they got it. Rusher Law gets hit with the binding. That's gonna be a thousand gold for Guster Posey. And we he, that's just, you don't have to die there. Sort of caught out alone with his hands down. Rusher lol. Get hosed down, and this could be the fight. Warhead picking up another kill onto Mr. Kane. However, TSS in main is still very, very strong. Oh, she Here missed the Matt Q! Has the ult as well. Morgana not getting the 
you Guster Posey has to flock away. Does this time get the Dark Binding, but is too little too late on the mid lane. Gwen does pick up the inhibitors, has the Q, has a lot of healing. Can he 1v1 Gobi? Is the question. Ranger 24 is most currently going to go down. Shield Bow does not save him as is customary. We see the Orn getting the flash auto, gonna pick up the shutdown onto this Gwen, but I assume in vain, and that will be able to finish him off. Another ace for the side of Team Death Realm. Um, Sona and Jax are going to be up. I don't think the Starvin and the Specs can get anything. In fact, maybe now they stay too long. Win. Matt dealing so much damage though, doesn't get the kill. Um, Sona Aeroclaw's going to be able to just walk back to the base and Warhead gets feared away as he is sprinting with home guards. These minions actually are going to pick up the bottom inhibitor turret. I see Aeroclaw's healing up. Team Death Realm, they are definitely feeling themselves right now, you know. Like, that was really good from them. It almost looked like they were going to lose that fight, but they were able to come out, come together, and just... I'm sorry, Crosspoint Origin looked like they were they looked like they were ever gonna get something from that fight, but unfortunately Matt or not Matt, but Guster Posey missing the dark binding there was not able to um deal enough damage onto the TSS in vain. So unfortunately that just didn't turn the fight in their favor, but he was able to get the shutdown gold on Rusher as you know, Team Death Realm definitely having some hubris there, feeling a bit prideful and you know once again, when you're really far ahead, you get you get ahead of yourself and you get a little bit cocky and think, all right, you know, these guys can't really hurt me. I can kill them faster than they can jump onto me. But unfortunately, it's still a Morgana and a Sona. They have plenty of CC to lock you down if they catch you. So you just have to be a bit cognizant of that. But I don't see this game switching in favor of Crosspoint Origin yet anytime soon. It looks like Team Death Realm here are gonna secure the soul. Team Death Realm picking up the Infernal Soul, finally going to walk towards that Baron 26 minutes into the game. Better late than never, I guess, with the Infernal Soul, I guess you're <laughs> guaranteeing you know, that you're going to be able to get this play. We'll see. They should just start it up, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'd like to see. Just starting up the Baron. No one on Crossbow Origin is remotely near Let's to over point out here, Orin is starting to upgrade his team members' items, you know, starting with his own, and then he actually upgraded Posey's next making the Leandris lament there so Matt Posey's definitely going to put out a lot more damage but um, it's still not enough yet as he's going to need help from his teammates to combo and stack this damage adequately and properly if they want to have a chance to stay in this game yeah definitely Rusher Law and Mr. Potato and the rest of Team Death Row just want to end the game here um uh, Crossman Origin, we're farming supers. We see Invade getting oh, the Cataclysm. That is huge. We see the Ornals coming out. That's actually here. I'm not going to be the first one going down in the fight. One of the next turns goes down. Guster Posey goes down as well. One kill picked up for the side of Crosspoint Origin. Two, Ash finally dealing some damage, but it is way too little. Way too late as the Nexus is going to go down. Team Death Realm up 1 0 over Crosspoint Origin. 1-0 indeed and what a game like it, it was quite unfortunate that team death for for, for the side of crossbow origin of course that team death row accelerated and just would not put take their foot off the gas pedal once they got a couple of kills and and you know that lead they drafted the scaling comp and they just were not able to play to their advantages um because of, of the few failed ganks and uh, skirmishes that they took so it was quite unfortunate for them, but hopefully they're able to bounce back and hopefully we'll see a different draft, um, especially for the bot lane uh, on the side of Crosspoint Origin in game two. Yeah, I feel like Crosspoint Origin, um, they maybe thought about whether they could, but I feel like they should have been thinking about focusing on whether they should. And I feel like with a lot of these picks, the answer was that no, they shouldn't have. Um, definitely... <laughs> Go back to the drawing board angle for Crosspoint Origin. I want to see them shake things up. Maybe a draft that has you know more damage, more early game agency. Because there's a lot of mistakes from Team Death Realm. That was less than a perfect game, especially considering how ahead they did get in the early game. You know, a lot of um, I guess I saw hesitancy, especially around the Baron. I feel like that one play where they decided not to go for it and mm -hmm. then proceeded to ignore it for the next four and a half minutes is generally not the tempo that you want to be playing at with a 12k gold lead. So there is definitely a lot of weaknesses in this team, Death Realm team, that Crosspoint Origin should be looking to 
exploit. And, you know, with a different draft, with a different, you know, plan to play out the early game, it's definitely still possible for a competitive series. Um, do you have any other final thoughts, Redacted? Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, Crossboard Origin, you definitely kind of shot yourself in your in your foot um, with the Ash pick there. You know, there's still plenty of high priority ADCs that, that definitely do a lot uh, more damage from the early game throughout the rest of the game. Jin was still open. Just pick Ezreal Jin. Was still open. Just pick Jin there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like there were. So I want to see more agency, or at least. Um, a more proactive pick for the side of Crosspoint Origins bot lane. Yeah, definitely. Um, I believe we're going to send it to a break now, right? Yes. All right. Well, you, you heard the man. Um, we're going to go to a quick break, but when we get back, we will be here for game two drafts between Team Death Realm and Crosspoint Origin. All right, <laughs> welcome back. Um, bit of production hiccups here, but I am back with Redacted again. He is having a bit of a funny moment right now. <laughs> hey, I'm back. How's it going? Looks like we're getting into draft here in just a bit. Yeah, oh. both teams going to ready up. Um, you excited for this draft, Redacted? I am excited because I'm sure I know at least one person on the side of Crossport Origin is listening to this stream and they probably heard about how they need a real ADC. So I'm very curious as to see what they're going to pick for their bot lane. I mean, it's not just, I don't want to like pigeonhole all of no. the draft problems on the Ash yeah. because the Ash was like very bad, right? But there were like other picks too that like don't help that problem. Like, I, I, I like the Morgana mid technology. I feel like mm -hmm. um Guster Posey, you know, definitely was sort of the eighth of the team in OP two G terms. 
um, getting picking up some of those shutdowns. You just can't draft Morgana mid where you don't have reliable DPS literally anywhere else. I like the Jax in the context where we were flexing the orange jungle and Jax top to counter the Gwen. Mm -hmm. Apparently we weren't doing that. So I don't like the Jax anymore. So Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely a lot. Uh, I would say there's the side of Crosspoint Origin. Their team had too much of a countdown timer as to when we will be really strong. It, like, they had too many champions that needed too much time to get strong. If you're going to do something like that, I feel like you need to balance it out on a certain sides of the map. So, like, if you're going to draft a scaling jungle or top lane, have something in the bot lane or in mid to maybe supplement and get you through those mid-game um, low points so that way your other, the other side of your map can then eventually do their job when they get to that point. But getting to these draft or bands here, as we see the Mordekaiser and Corky coming out for TDR with their third band being the Lulu and Caitlyn, J4, and Lux for Crosspoint Origin. If you see the J4 band coming out from Crosspoint Origin, definitely really, really like that. Um, TSS in vain sort of smurfed on Crosspoint Origin. Absolutely mm. destroyed them as... All right, we see the we see the Jinx lock in from Crosspoint Origin. Yep, but the That's Lucianami Yuan Jinx and an instant Lucianami from Team Deathrealm. That is what I want to see. Um, generally with B1 Jinx, you usually punish it either with um, Kate Lux, which has been doubly banned by Crosspoint Origin. You either punish it with Kate Lux. You pick like a caster, like a um, Varus or like the Poxaya or something like that, mm -hmm. and you sort of play to. Put, shove her out and then play for mid game before mm -hmm. she can sail, or you slam Lucia Nami into it. And they went with option three, and I really like this Lucia Nami. I did not like the um two v twoing of Ranger twenty four on the Ash. Maybe it's because he was playing Ash, but you saw those Ash flash forwards, and yeah. <laughs> that was kind of unlucky. Yeah. So, um, TDR definitely smart in picking a bot lane that wins the two v two again. It's simple. If you don't don't if you fight before two items, you won't have a second item IE. So that is definitely <laughs> the play as Crossman Origin though did pick up the Gwen and the Thresh. And you know, when you have that type of bot lane matchup, it's definitely good to one get the Thresh for survivability, able to lantern the jinx out of you know harm's way. Doesn't really help too much into Lucianami. Lucianami sort of Playing at that sort of mid-range, um, at the edge of Lucian's auto-attack range, mm -hmm. sort of dashing in with the Nami E. So it's going to be hard for Thresh to drag away the trading patterns, but Thresh very good in stopping, you know, potential dies, potential ganks, and just all around in team fights as well. So I like that. And then we have the Gwen, which, you know, again is still a flex. I hope for the side of Crosspoint <laughs> Origin. <laughs> Um, power pick, you know, taking it away from TDR as well. TDR Nemesis minus that um, one Q hiccup was doing a lot of work on that Gwen last game. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't mind actually if Gwen goes in the top lane, regardless if like it's counter picked or not. Nemesis did pretty well on the pick, and I think he should get another chance at it. Um, especially this now is that for, uh, cross point though. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, I'm so sorry. Um, well, well then. Nemesis won't get another chance at it, but <laughs> seeing as the Shen has also been drafted, and we now see the Xin Zhao, Malphite, and Nar ban, so I'm curious as to see what uh, Crosspoint will ban out here for their last ban here. Uh, probably another mid, probably a mid laner more than likely, or oh, another jungle pick as the Diana ban. They definitely want to shrink that jungle pool, so I'm curious as to see what TDR may pick next. I know. Oh, they um, got the Vagar. That is going oh, to be the Vagar locked in. Okay. The baby cage is going to be brought out for Team Deathrealm. One thing I do want to note is that Team Deathrealm banned two top laners. They banned the Gnar and the Malphite. So at least in Team Deathrealm size, this is in fact a Gwen jungle on R2. See what Crosspoint Origin have to answer this Vagar with, as well as confirm the flex. And that's going to be the set. So set. Looks like it is a Gwen jungle. Good read by Team Deathrealm on the draft to sort of pinch out that pool and Silas, Silas it, covered in the mid lane. We see the echo as well. Victor, Victor, is, okay. Victor is the more traditional pick here. I've seen uh, Aurelia. Oh, Aurelia. Uh, we are. Okay. okay. What are you guys I'm, doing? I'm going right, to hold off on the reaction. I'm going to hold off on the reaction. So something's picked up. Cause I can't say any more champion names. I'm tired. 
Action. Action. And we're going back Echo. to the Echo. Okay. So yeah. one thing to note about a lot of the champions that they were hovering, um, they were hovering a lot of um they were hovering a lot of like melee matchups, you know. I was talking about like the stylus, the Irelia. Mm -hmm. This Echo again, another melee matchup, does have the most wave clear out of the champions noted, but you have triple melees in for the side of Crosspoint Origin, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It is kind of hard to deal with the Vigar Cage as a melee champion. However, mm -hmm. these specific melee champions, namely the Gwen and the Echo, do have means of dealing with it. Echo's E2 can mm -hmm. phase through the wall, and Gwen is notoriously immune. Gwen to... is immune. Gwen is immune to a lot of things. You know, the Vagar Ultimate, the Vagar E, being a balanced champion, definitely, you know, a very versatile pick with that W. <laughs> but on the other side, Teen Death Realm going in with that Kindred, a pick that we have seldom seen. Redacted, give me your thoughts on this Kindred pick. Yeah, so actually, um, you know, in terms of the Kindred pick, I see that, you know, with the Shen, Nami, Lucian being drafted here, I can see the side of Team Death Realm being very aggressive with this pick. Once Kindred, of course, gets the uh, ultimate there, uh, Lamb's Wrist Bite. So I, I'm seeing, I, I'm more likely seeing that you know, Kendra's gonna be being really aggressive as Shen splitting across the map. They're gonna use the Shen ultimate to, you know, engage more onto the side of Crosspoint Origin there. Lucian and Nami to come back it up and Vigar more than likely to burst out any of the remaining members or lock them into the cage and, <laughs> you know, you're locked in here with me, not the other way around and just punish the side of Crosspoint Origin here. So I feel like Crosspoint Origin, after seeing the Vigar pick, maybe could have looked for another ranged champion. Granted, once again, like you said, they do have the means to deal with the Vigar stun there, but it's there it's gonna require some coordination and, you know, once again, patience and good play from from, from their side. So Yeah, hundred percent agree. Looking at Crosspoint Origins um draft this game, I'm glad they have a draft. I am <laughs> I'm proud. Honestly. Oh my god! I, I the feel salt. like I mean, I feel like I don't know. I feel like the draft definitely like handicapped um Crosspoint Origin a lot last game, and you know we're here on CTS Two all looking for the you know the best games and the most banger content, and you know I feel like this game is definitely going to be you know has the potential at least. I'm not gonna. Not going to jinx anything, but it definitely has the potential to be a lot more of a competitive game on Crossbone Origin, getting these power picks in the Gwen and the Jinx, and having, you know, Absolutely. some facilitation. I guess my biggest question mark would be the Echo, but this isn't, like, a question mark like the Ash was a question mark. This is more of, like, a, okay, you know, show me what you got on this pick. It's, you know, counter pick into the Vigar. Guster Posey, you know, definitely a very, you know, had a pretty good performance last game. Given the circumstances, so we'll see maybe, you know, with a better map state around him, if he can start, you know, styling on TDR Matt on this um, immobile control mage. Yeah, we will definitely see how it goes. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and cut it to a short break here as we prepare to get into the match. Everybody, panic. Hold on. <laughs> I'm about to say something really cool. Three, forty-one, nine, and lift off! No one dies screaming without me. I feel like I forgot to shoot something. You're starting to bore me. She's such a loser. Always ready to cry. Da -da -da -da. Ah, come on. What's the worst that could happen?
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Summoner's Rift for Game 2 of Team Death Realm vs. Crosspoint Origin. Unfortunately for us at home, it does not look like there will be any invasion action here. We see that's standard five points from both sides. You know, we're just chilling, having a big old line on Summoner's Rift. Have a little bit of a river party, as it were. Now we see the emotes coming out and... Yeah, this is just oh okay that was that's personal. <laughs> I was gonna talk about how Summoner's Rift, you know, before minions spawn, before minions crash, it's such usually a nicer place when teams are fanning out. You know, you get to just have a good minions old moments with spawn. your opponent. You know, nah, show the, Matt, Matt wants all the smoke. <laughs> show off your emote collection, but no, TDR yeah. Matt, absolutely ruthless going for the Vigar Q onto Guster Posey, getting that one AP, that is going to be the difference between life and death, mark your words, but we will see hey. both junglers going to start on the bot side this game. Yeah, hey, you know, in, in early game, every single stat matters, right? Oh, As we see, Gobi. Gobi just walking onto TDR and Nemesis. Nemesis looking for something, probably a word, if I had to guess, but Gobi just killing in the bush. There's a little smack down, but having to walk the long way around means that TDR Nemesis is actually going to be the one with first auto onto the wave. Chen, you know, known as a tank, but does have surprisingly high base damages. You know, definitely can catch opponents off guard. And you see Lucian already getting the trade onto Arrow Cross. This this is without, by the way, hitting that third auto to proc the third Lucian in the um Nami and the um, Electrocute, mm -hmm. and already um, Aerocross getting chunked out. However, the play plus the Glacial Augment does mean that Ranger 24 is going to be able to answer damage. We see TDR Nemesis gets to level 2 going into on the Gobi. That's going to be set E, but we see the hook, hook. from Aerocross going down. Flash. Ranger 24 got level 2 first. Lucian and Nami crudely healing up the Flash auto from Aerocross. It's not going to be enough, so... What we saw in the top lane and the bot lane is... This is why we respect level 2 gamers. Both sides, yes. one member of each team getting that level two first and instantly looking to capitalize on the mispositioning from their counterparts. I love what I saw there from both sides. Even though there was not a single, even though there was no kill, I still like the aggressiveness that came out from both sides. And I, we can definitely expect to see um, Warhead more than likely look to come to his bot lane to punish those blown summoners now so and you know just seeing the agency out from the side of crossborn origins bot lane is such a contrast compared to game one and i want to see more of that as this game continues so um let's just keep our eye out for that as well um and it looks like yeah i wanted to bring that up earlier is since both junglers had started on their bottom side that looks like in see an invade coming out in game looking for the one we went on to warhead 852 uses the kindred proc but it's not gonna oh, be gonna enough die. yet he's gonna yep. die going in for the kill onto the level four gwen that is unironically just a bait base staff base stat difference rather i yeah, I'm cannot gonna... talk I don't, I don't think Kindred ever wins that matchup unless, you know, Gwen's like kind of chunked out. Like, what was he thinking? He should have just got, took his scuttle, dropped the ward, and then walked away. But unfortunately, now he puts himself at a disadvantage of uh, himself and his team as now this Gwen has a kill and, you know, allows herself to... Oh, that was first blood too! So, yeah, the extra gold there. That is, I don't know, um, Kindred... He saw that Gwen was level 4, did have like a slight bit health advantage, but Gwen has the red buff. Gwen also, ooh, we see the hook coming out though, Aerocross looking to flay, doesn't get the flay into the traps though. So instead it's gonna be Aerocross, it's gonna be chunked out a good side step forward, does allow him to survive the play, but Rusher Lol has found himself somewhere. Don't really know how he got there. IS must have eaten over the wall, but taking so much damage for yeah. no real reason, sort of the story of this game so far. Uh, that's a lot of overextension from Team Death Realm, both in these bot lane trades and in the um, uh, the charitable donation that TSS and Bane did give over to Warhead 852. Yeah, absolutely, as both junglers did end up on the bot side around the same time, so nothing came out of it. Just a few blown summoners and some uh, 
HP being exchanged back and forth between both sides. But if we look at our mini map here, we see the side of Crosspoint Origin looking to potentially. Oh no, nope, it looks like they're just gonna go for the Drake. So that Drake should go over to the side of CPO there without any um, contest. As we see the top laner is just fight, Shen actually out. Uh, doesn't elect to go for the trade. I think if he hit that Shadow Dash onto the onto the set after that set W had gone down, Shen does have the ignite in this lane. I'm surprised, in fact, you know, going for that aggressive summoner spell and then not looking for that trade, but, you know, I guess it is the safe for Optimum. You see the hook going to be dashed away from Rusher Lol. That Lucian E going to be able to get him out. As now you see the dash coming through, the sword slow hits, but Gobi is going to have the W. Oh, wow. Shen probably going to try and don't, oh, okay? He face can't oh, use the ignite anyway. It doesn't matter. It has the flash, flash. the auto off. Is that going to be enough? One more tick will not do it. Kindred. Gobi with the regions here, but Kindred is here. Goes over the wall. There's the Shen ultimate to save in vain. Taking a lot of damage though. Nemesis is still low from that trade. You see the TP, TP. coming out from Gobi. We're head forced to burn the ghost as that's going to be the Shen ultimate burned already early in the game. And that does allow a lot of freedom for the side of Crosspoint Origins mid and bot play a lot more aggressively and nothing really picked up on the side of for the side of TDR that you burn the Shen flash the ignite the ultimate Kindred you know walks into the jungle not going for camps Nami goes over the wall doesn't get the Whoa. grab and looking for the trade on to Guster Posey Guster walking away you see the team is here Matt's but here. Arrow Cross gets the hook it's not gonna be enough TDR Matt with the baby cage going to stop the advance of Crosspoint Origin, Rusher Law taking a lot of damage, it's not going to be enough to secure a kill, though Matt getting slowed by the Zap, he's walking forward, he's going for the Dark Matter, he wants to find something, but neither team can find anything in this play, I assume Team Deathrealm is going to be able to get Wave Prio, at least for the coming bit, this Warhead is here on the bot side as well, this 4v4 um, potentially can erupt if both teams elect to take another fight. Woo! Wow! Plenty of action here, like just going all over throughout the entire map. But still, besides that uh, first blood that Warhead 9852 got, there has not been a single kill on either side. But Speaking, oh, they're thought. looking to chain that Warhead goes in with the Lancer. TKR Mr. Taken and take the Ignite, has a flash away. The hook does not go down and might have jinxed it as no kill again goes down to either side. Definitely. Teams looking for plays, looking to make something happen in the early game, but the execution is just not there. They aren't able to get the kills that they need. Guster Posey in this mid lane uses the Time Winder, but is now completely out of mana. We Cage. see the Cage gonna get the stun. Will he be, there be enough damage? The Dark Matter does miss. We see the Q, the Primordial Burst going to get the kill. Solo kill for TDR Matt into Guster Posey. Yeah, and that right there was just bad mana management. Guster Posey had no mana, and he was still pushing really aggressively in that lane against uh, Matt, the Vigar there, so he, he, he should have known better. Taunt. Maybe looking for the kill sides against it. The Shen sort of, you know, playing touch and go with this set. You know, hasn't really utilized the Ignite in these fights yet. Of course, does have the ultimate, so not having teleport isn't the biggest deal, but... You know, as it gets later and later, you know, this Ignite's gonna be losing value. Definitely wanted to angle potentially for a solo kill with this summoner cell setup, but hasn't been able to find success with that. Yeah, definitely. And um, I wanted See to the hook say, coming down oh, though. Never mind. <laughs> Mr. Pate gets the control word, but for what a kill going down to Ranger 24 and uh oh. You can't be there. There's yeah. just an overextension from the side of Team Death Realm. Yeah, an overextension indeed, as he, he, they did not have control over that lane. I don't know why Mr. Potato was there. He should have definitely allowed him and Rusher to LOL to push in the lane first and then go clear out the vision in the tri bush there. And that was just, once again, just bad small micro decisions that could have come back to affect their uh, team death rail later in the game, as now the Jinx has a kill on her. Yeah, as you see Warhead 852 looking for the play onto in vain. This time the Gwen is going to be the one walking offensively into the enemy jungle forces in vain to just recall as he doesn't have any camps left up. And that's going to be the Rift Tower started up by Crosspoint, or Crosspoint Origin. Yeah. You see, Mr. Potate, I've seen this before. <laughs> oh my god, dude! <laughs> 
I oh we see the channels. Could this potentially be the save? The super mega death rocket goes on some angle, but the channels interrupt, so Nemesis isn't gonna be here for the play. Arrow Cross doesn't get the hook and somehow he's not Somehow Mr. Patate gets out. He is just not punished for that one, apparently. We see the control word, however, from the side of Crosspoint Origin does live another day. It's alluring poor health is going to taunt Mr. Potate for the rest of this game as we the hook Ooh. not going to hit onto Rusher Law that potentially could have been a kill with the flame chompers in the bot lane. Yeah, Mr. Potate, he re I, he really wants that uh you know that 30 gold you get from taking out the control word there. It's just being a bit greedy with it. Like, you know, just have a little bit of patience and go with your buddy. There's a buddy system for a reason. You are a Nami. Like you will die fast. The first time, it's like, yeah, that's, that's understandable. Sometimes, you know, we make mistakes, but it's mm -hmm. been like less than three minutes, dude. You see the calling yeah. going to be used as attempt to clear the wave. Warhead in the bot lane after picking up the dragon does have this rift tower looking to break the first bot turret and unlock this jinx to get farm in the mid lane and start to affect the rest of the map. See Shelly going to get that charge. Turret gets low, but it doesn't go down. Um, the side of Crossbone Origin looking to this recall. Uh, it looks like they're gonna have to wait another time to finally finish the turret off. That's quite unfortunate, but I do love what uh, Crosspoint Origin are doing here with this Jinx, giving her agency, giving her gold. Um, you know, if they were able to take that turret out, I could definitely see them rotating this Jinx to one of the other two lanes to get some more plate gold onto her and accelerate this champion to be the menace that we know she can and will be as soon as she uh, completes these items here. But, you know, they weren't able to get that turret, so we'll probably see them return to that bot lane. Ho hopefully, they'll be able to take it out before these plates fall down. Uh, I'm not too sure now, though, as we have about two, about two minutes left even less than that before plates have are disabled. So we'll just have to keep our eye out and see where Crossbow Orange do next from here. But in the meantime, we do see um, TSS in vain, continuing to farm up on that Kindred. Obviously he has the level six now, so Lamb's Respite is active. And we see Gilby's lane definitely pushing into the Nemesis here. So I will be keeping my eye out on this top lane here as we might see in vain and uh, Nemesis, look for a play onto the set here. Yeah, definitely. We see what can happen, although Roger Lol getting Whoa. picked up in the bot lane. The turret went down as well, and the Sphinx is so, so far ahead already. This Lucian Nami pick not working out if you can't exactly win the 2v2. Ranger 24 unlocked on a champion that deals more than two damage. We see Arrow Cross in the bot lane jungle. TSS in vain does get hooked. Warhead is here, doesn't take the lantern. Can this be the kill Stop in vain? Watch. Taking so much damage. The stopwatch for Arrow Cross. We see the Lance Respite right. come out. He flashes over the wall. He uses the Lance Respite. We see the Shen ult coming down as well, but he's going to die too quickly. Mr. Fatate also going down. As that's going to be a double kill for Warhead. 8-5-2. TDR Matt not really able to do anything here. Warhead getting the needlework down onto Matt. Not going to be the kill. R3 not going to connect. And this Jinx and this Gwen have all of the kills for Crossbone Origin. They have all of the gold. And they are poised to sort of run this game over. Already a 3.5k gold lead almost for the side of Crosspoint Origin and I don't really think that um, Team Death Realm exactly has the scaling advantage. I, they have Vagar, but that's still tough because Vagar mm -hmm. not a DPS mage, more of a just one-shot mage. It's definitely mm -hmm. harder to pilot those types of champions in the late game. It's really only this Kindred, CSS in vain, who yes is farming well, but also is sort of been getting bullied by Warhead whenever the two have met, so we'll have to see yeah. if he's going to be able to get stronger than that Gwen. Absolutely, and yeah, TSS in vain. I actually, let me see how many stacks he has, if he has any. Yeah, only one stack so far, so definitely needs to try and collect some more of these stacks, so that way, you know, the Kindred will get increased stats, increased auto attack range of damage, and um, he will be able to, you know, just put out some more and help his team out a bit more. But unfortunately, as of right looking, now, that looking doesn't look for the to play on Gobi. Yeah. Gobi absolutely broke the ankles of Team Death Realm, flashing away now. TSS in main though, still 
still looking for the play. You see the tidal non wave. tidal wave coming through. That's the bubble hit onto Gobi. And the grid is expiring. That is just not as big of a shield as he would have hoped DSS in main. Finally, picking up his... I believe his first kill of the game. Yes, it is. Tidar Matt catches Ranger in the Vigar cage. That's going to be Everfrost hitting too. The Vigar Q, the Vigar E, but the flash from Guster Posey. The Time Winder goes backwards. It does not matter though. As an arrow cross hits a hook onto TSS in vain. The Lamb's Respite is not up. Guster Posey forces the Hunger League. Warhead is here and Warhead is mad. Warhead looking to snip, snip, snip the side of Team Death Realm. Guster Posey walking forward. Doesn't have the Chrono Break. But still does not care. We see the teleports coming out as well from the side of Gobi looking to pick up Rusher. Oh, Rusher. Oh, Rusher. Oh, Rusher. <laughs> I oddly get rushing that nowhere. Oh. oh, we see the fight coming in the mid lane. We'll have to check on the bot lane later. Duster Posey gets the kill really quickly on TSN Train. And Mr. Potate and TDR Nemesis have enough face damage to shut that or get that kill. It wasn't shut down rather. TDR Nemesis does get hooked up, not gonna get stunned up by the traps as the side of Crossbow and Origin going to settle for this dragon, gonna settle for getting soul points. Three dragons to zero on the side of Crosspoint Origin and Yeah, this lead is starting to grow very, very slightly. Yeah, what is going on right now? Like cross TDR it's a complete op it's a complete mirror opposite in terms of neutral objectives that we we're seeing from um game one uh chelsea you know tdr was in control of the drakes but now it looks like crosspoint origin are in control of drakes here and are on this sole point here um we did see tdr fight back just a little bit and we we did see the potential for what their composition can do but as of right now once again the jinx and the gwen are just so far ahead i you know i wouldn't say so far ahead but just they're a bit ex they're more accelerated than they should have been given these kills and go that they have on these respective champions so it makes it a bit harder to um play against them as matt is kind of out of position in between the three champions here uh it looks like he's hiding on that place i'm seen though walking in gets the cage onto arrow cross walking forward with the nami e the, the title surge not gonna be any kills yeah, Aerocross already below half health for the Spiker is dealing so much damage. It must have been the AP from level 1, but you see oh. the hook coming through the play onto TDR Matt. Not going to be able to secure any more damage, though. Rift Herald secured by Warhead 852. I'm going to pick that one up, but the fight looks like it's going to go the favor of Team Death Realm. Uh, Lamb's Respite is top <laughs> point to get the heal, and that is a triple kill. Whoa. Rusher Lol going way too far forward, but has the channel, so it doesn't really matter. The big staff going Wait, wide. And that's what? An eighth what? quadra kill for the side of Team Death Realm, and I what? Fair. Those Wait. reactions are very fair. Was it Russia surrounded by three of their members? <laughs> I mean, if you're walking into three and they don't actually hit you, I don't think you take any damage. In the, I understand that, but once the ultimate went out, I thought he would have been bursted down, but it doesn't look like that was the case as the lifesteal on this Kindred, and I want, let me see how many marks he has now, with three marks, so, you know, still not as many marks as we I expected him to have, but Russia able to survive and get the quadra kill, and now Kindred will definitely start leading her team towards victory, or at least getting a foot back into the game here as the gold has now even back up again and yeah it's tdr definitely having a dog in the fight for sure yeah tss in vain was not in the best spot definitely in a better spot now getting a quadra kill at 19 minutes definitely is sort of a good golden fusion as you see this kindred might be able to run down ranger 24 on um, the dark lantern however stops that play dead in its tracks and in vain also just has this whole jungle up he cleared the bot side and now is going to get his top side including that red buff so we see the hook though okay. on to rusher lol this is a tale as old as time and super Ooh. mega death rocket is going to be blocked up by mr potato that would have landed and that would in fact have killed rusher lol but arrow cross getting a lot of good hooks in this game definitely has more agency on the thresh than on that stona but we will see. The gold lead has almost been evened up after that Rift Herald play. Um, the Rift Herald itself, however, was picked up by Warhead 852. Right. So that's a good consolation prize that can be used to get a turret down to sort of open up the gold lead again. But 
see a very slight of around probably 50 or so gold right now for the side of Team Death Realm, turning the tables a bit back to you know the state that it was getting towards the last game. Gobi and TDR Nemesis looking for the 1v1. The settle comes out though, they're looking to fight this for the kill, and look at that E damage and the taunt misses. Gobi gets the kill. If that taunt hit, like I don't know, it was a it was a pretty point blank taunt that you missed, but that would have been the difference maker. Gobi getting the solo kill, however, in the top lane. Really good to understand his opportunities playing with the bush or something, as we see. That's yeah, you know, just quite unfortunate for, for oh, the side of uh TBR wait, okay. there, but never mind. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're gonna do a little rundown on that play. We see Mr. Potato walking towards the bush, gonna face check it. Definitely not an ideal decision. Sees the thresh hook come out of the bush. So we see another thresh hook coming down. Yikes. Ben goes wide, but TDR Matt still stunned up. We see the channel is there, the Everfrost onto two. The Lamb's rest it does save Matt for a little bit as suddenly that is a crucial kindred ult. This Warhead does pick up the one for one, but on the other side, Aerocross went down to Invane, and Gus Raposi and Warhead did both go down. That was a really, really good kindred ult. But he has his Invane and the Flash taunt making up for the missed taunt earlier. Gets the pick oh on to Ranger. The set W does set W things. Rusher Law just really didn't need to be there, but that is still a very, very good play on the side of Team Death Realm. Going to pick up this dragon and going to stop the threat of a Mountain Soul for another five minutes. And its kindred is accelerated. Very, 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 very scary to face on the side of Crosspoint Origin. Yeah, Chelsea, and only four stacks still on the, or four marks, I'm sorry, on the Kindred still. But just like I said earlier, um, the TDR are definitely playing through their top end jungle and just using their bot and mid lane as auxiliary damage to finish off the rest of these champions here. I have never seen Shen do so much damage before. Like, too bad the damage charts are not working because I'd be very curious to see how as to see how much damage this Shen has done. Granted, he's only been fighting the set, really, besides, you know, whenever he has to join up in the team fights, but Shen is definitely putting the pause on the set here and, you know, putting in the work for his team, as well as the Kindred, definitely leading their team to victory and getting their team a foothold back into this game. Yeah, 100% Shen just looking like, you know, I mentioned the high base damage in lane, you know, that high base damage is still there for the rest of the game. Obviously, it's less polarizing towards the end of the game, but if he gets onto a Jinx, you know, with that, you know, Q1, Q2, Q3, still going to be very, very scary for this range 80 carry. And we'll see. Right, Ranger 24 had a really, really good early game, but in the team fight, sort of not really able to have that impact that you would want to Jinx that gets those early kills to have. Absolutely, yeah, and right now for the side of Crosspoint Origin, I need to see them once again put agency back into their Jinx. They need to play around this Jinx and be a bit more cognizant of the fights they want to take and how they want to take them, you know? You need to ensure this Jinx is able to put down the rockets or over time and ensure that she's able to survive long enough to be able to get these resets so that way she can lead your team to victory. So they just need to be, be a bit more cognizant and patient and just you know, um, have the adequate vision to make sure that they can uh, lead their team to victory and or at least get a, a foothold back into this game because what's, what was looking like their advantage is now the definitely hook coming down in favor on TDR. TDR, Mr. McCain, he's gonna get the Shen ulti to save him and TSS invade goes godlike Ooh. and that is just not the fight you want to take. Aerocross does hit a good hook and... Jinx was not there well like, just like i said your jinx was not there why are you fighting without one of your primary carries this is so similar to solo qs games the jinx wants to farm up to try and scale a bit better you see a potential hook but you don't have your damage source with you so what are you doing like you don't have your damage and you're hooking into shen ultimate they are looking for these like picks before fights when in reality it's they've been shen ulted so many times that it just completely mm -hmm. turned the tide of the fight and at some point it's like you gotta you gotta figure this one out right like you can't just bank everything on getting that first pick in a fight when you know you've been channeled on at least like three or four times now but if they're Absolutely. unable to figure that one out if they're unable to adapt they're just gonna keep losing these team fights tss in vain is going to get even more kills and 
the game is just going to swing back into the favor of Team Death Realm. Yo, absolutely. As a matter of fact, it's, it's, according to the gold, I mean, it kind of already is. I'm not saying that it's completely theirs. I would say, you know, the skills are still about even in terms of um, who has the advantage of this matchup right now. Obviously, Team Death Realm does have the Baron buff, so that will give them some extra uh, gold infusion into their team and a bit more pushing power. But we saw Guster Posey getting the top lane turret there, but Nemesis is starting to flank him. Nemesis I don't know if Nemesis present. will be able to kill the Echo, though. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I mean, it, I'm sure if Echo tried to fight him, Nemesis is 100% wins level 15 versus level 13, and Echo oh, doesn't yeah. really oh, have yeah. the damage to, you know, ever kill Shen, but Echo does, you know, have the mobility, use the face, um, use the E to get away from the Shen taunt, going to be enough to sort of secure his escape. But we see the setup for the dragon, this time Team Death Realm going to assert full control and that's not the button oh. in Vayne wants to press. Gets the Gale Force forward anyway though, Arrow Cross is alone on this play. In Vayne walking way too uh -oh. far forward, there's no way! Wow! Oh my god, that was interesting and now suddenly there's oh, Jinx got a, a reset. lot of gold. Jinx gets the first kill onto Vigar and now it's just Rusher Law that deals damage on this team however there were it's enough the kills picked up by the side of team death realm that it doesn't actually matter flash forward from rusher wall after getting the calling onto warhead 852 means that despite the tremendous amount of grief that was just pulled by team death realm they still are ahead enough they still are you know dealing enough damage that it doesn't matter they are going to pick up the second mountain drake and deny the soul for yet another five minutes absolutely deny the soul they are and they will as team death realm have definitely and i would say confidently have taken control over this game what looked like a honestly a disastrous early game initially with the jinx and the gwen just getting these early kills but those early kills have not translated in this mid game for the side of cops point origin so now it's just they're playing a bit frantically and once again they keep they're they're caught out of position they're not setting up for these neutral objectives in time i i don't know i i don't know or i wouldn't say i don't know but i'm just not sure what the comms are like for the side of crosspoint origin right now what they're thinking because they're just not taking good fights right now yeah nemesis looking for the pick on to gobi does force the flash out uh, gonna just smartly walk away after getting that summoner spell for free um the baron i believe is not up anymore. I'm not sure if it's only yeah. up on certain people, but that's gonna sort of cut the pushing power for the side of Team Death Realm. Not really easy for this comp to shove into Jinx Echo. So instead, gonna be looking to just farm up on this Vigar. Gonna be looking maybe to play for Vision, get some more um, um, picks in, on the map, and sort of accelerate the game that way rather than just playing for a full on C. Absolutely, and yeah, I mean, honestly, that I would I would continue the course for uh, the side of Team Death Realm here. You're pretty, your Kendra's pretty strong. Uh, just... Get absolutely blown up. <laughs> like you I was saying, the hook over, <laughs> miss the hook over the wall. But at some point, like if you hit that hook, do you ever kill any of them? I personally don't think so. So just again, way too far forward, and now suddenly Team Death Realm going to be able to get that mid wave in, potentially threaten that mid inner turret, or at least get these side lanes out as a result. Yeah, like I was saying, the Kinder is now definitely Ooh, strong. Ooh, Law has... steps onto the trap, but it doesn't matter. The Shen ultimate going to be there to save Rusher Law as TDR Nemesis going on a rampage. It's gonna be another kill picked up. TDR Matt TP behind the play looking to get that cage zoning off the side of crosspoint origin seems like the Mad, decision is to siege for this tower and matt is creating a lot of the space in vain he's over the wall looking for guster posey but does get hit by the traps to set ultimate not gonna bring in vain out as the tower goes down kinder ultimate absolutely saving in vain there oh as evan the kill jinx goes down as well as um, nemesis which just sort of wailing on all of them um, during the fight. That's going to be the case. That is going to be the inhibitor. That's going to be control no strong oh. back. There's no kindred. Well, yeah, but their minion did survive for long enough that the first tower went down. Warhead is here. They, they want to try and end this. Make the play. Warhead going for the needle. We're about to four, Whoa. but 
takes a primordial burst to the throat as TBR Matt gets the kill. That's it. That is game. Absolute dominant mid to late game. That was a very shaky early game by Team Death Realm, but after that fight around the Rift Herald, they were able to pick it back up. They were able to get that game back into their control, and by the end, it just looked like game one all over again. Yeah, it did, and it's quite unfortunate, you know, for the side of a uh, crosspoint origin. But once again, kudos to Team Death Realm for not tilting, pulling it together, and realizing, like, all right, guys, you know, like we did give some g kills or over early to the Jinx and to the Gwen, but we can still pull this out. And as long as we play together and once again, using that Kindred Shen combo, even with, I'm not gonna lie, I thought the Shen not having TP was kind of BM, but you know what? The, the the way his cooldown on his Stand United was refreshing and up for like almost every team fight and skirmish, it didn't look like it mattered. So definitely um, TDR pl using their top in jungle to play through and then exemplify that to the rest of their team members so well done from them but i'm quite unfortunate for the side of crosspoint origin who weren't able to use their two strongest champions to accelerate their lead and they just weren't working well together to um you know use their strong points to propel them forward in the game it's definitely a better look from crosspoint origin getting a more human draft is showed Absolutely. that you know they have potential they were sort of um destroying rusher and um mr potato in the 2v2 as jinx thrash into lucia nami their you know their <laughs> early game was good you know that like that lane shouldn't really go well for a side of ranger yeah. and um arrow cross and you can argue that um the bot lane of tdr might have made mistakes uh spoiler they did a lot but even still, there's you know things to work on, and yes, you know that Rift Herald fight was unfortunate in the mid to late game. Some of the decision making fell through, but at least you have somewhere you can start from. And you know if you're O3 in the season, you need to be holding on to those things that you can start from to potentially cobble together some sort of play playoff run. Absolutely. And but for the side of TDR, getting their first 2 0 victory. So that would definitely help them in terms of match points and in the standings. So kudos to them and congratulations to them. But any last words you want to say, uh, Chelsea, before we cut to break? Uh, I just can't get that I second Caitlin out of my mind. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to have nightmares about that personally. The fact. Mm. Oh, oh man man don't let it get to you too much you know maybe play some arams or a few games yourself so that way you can just wash out the bad memories and uh it'll clear out from your mind here <laughs> yeah i mean it was a pleasure to cast with you redacted i'll let you do the honors oh we have an interview yeah i'm hearing from redacted an, it, that we do have an interview that's yeah, spicy we, i forgot we did interviews here yeah, we have an interview with Genji Choi coming up here in just a bit, but so we're gonna go ahead and cut to a break as we prepare for that. So we'll talk to you, talk to him soon, and we will be back.
will stay in the 45 You will be our silent And we are back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have our interview here with TDR Matt. Matt, how are you doing tonight? Oh, you know, we're doing great. Yeah. Took a little duo. Everyone gets to go do whatever they want for the rest of the night. <laughs> we, we expected it, honestly. We knew it going into the game. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, that kind of answers my first question I was going to ask you about. How does it feel finally getting your first win of the uh, of the season? So. You know, yeah, going into the, the first two weeks, you know, we had we had two pretty good teams. Uh, I'll mm -hmm. give them that. You know, I think if we play them again, we, we'll beat them. I'll say that 100%. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea's, Chelsea's <laughs> just saying. Chelsea has a look on her face. I don't know if you can see it right now, but I don't know. She, yeah. You got to convince hey. her, not me. <laughs> yeah, we're, you know, we're, we just need to practice a little bit more. We didn't go, no practices this week, just went into this game. You know, we, we knew we were going to win the whole time. So there was no issues. Wow. In our early game, second game was a little, a little close, but eh. Eh. I'm on Vigar. They didn't ban it. We got Kindred. They're, they're not gonna win. Oh I, I personally love the confidence. <laughs> I am oh, here yeah. for this. I am, I am absolutely here for this. I am loving this interview. Tell me, tell me about the Vigar. Um, you got it. Your second game. It was banned away from you the first game, so I'm sure at least they believe that it was, you know power pick that you are um, very proficient on and I'm sure you you definitely showed it in game two tell me you know how you feel about the champion his more recent rise to prominence in um solo queue and comp play oh you know they're just lucky I didn't get full build if I got past three items it was just oof, over for them unkillable yeah it's just Man, I don't know I... they, they should have kept it banned that's all I'm saying I don't know why they didn't they didn't ban a second game they can pick the counter pick for it and you can go 60 CS down two levels but eh fine by me oh my god wow so i can definitely say that you are can we say like you're probably the most confident member in your team or are the rest of your team members like this too oh, I, i'm i'm pretty confident in my abilities you know my, the rest of my team's confident as well i'm for uh, cool. the whole team oh, good good so my i just had one question for you uh, well, not one question but one of my questions i had for you tonight was a uh, thoughts on their draft uh for game one like when you oh saw my god <laughs> what, what, what was going through the team comms when like you saw the orange you saw the more you saw the ash and then it was jack sona i mean when they locked in the ash we're like and they have no other damage really on the rest of the map we're like okay we're just gonna kill their bot lane on repeat and then we are going to win the game because ash behind useless doesn't do anything yeah, hundred percent. On the topic of game one, um, I did ask before the interview for a prepared statement. Um, did you manage to talk to your AD about that uh, IE second? Ah, uh, see, he like he went that IE second. I asked him about it, and he's he just said he doesn't care. He just wants flat right. damage. We're gonna win the game. Who cares? Fair it was enough. already over at that point. They don't outscale us. That's true. It's kind of over. Oh, <laughs> I don't goodness. know what they're doing. <laughs> So is that why you picked the Vex um, on B4 um, once you saw the Ash Morgana? Um, yeah, Ash Morgana Orn. You know, honestly, I was curious as to why you picked the Vex there. The Vex, I, uh, yeah, to be honest, we, we weren't really sure what to pick. I just locked in Vex because so I was doing the draft. So I'm like, okay, whatever. This is fine. We have Jarvan. We're just going to go bot lane. We'll just all in. It's whatever. Anywhere on the map, he goes in, ult someone, I ult in, boom, dead. That's pretty good combo, actually. So I and can't that's deny pretty much that. Pretty yeah. much what did happen. I think um, looking forward, obviously you guys had um, in week one, week two, are playing some you know top of the table teams, predictive gaming, Odin, and Horizon Gaming. You now obviously definitely harder matchups for you guys than this week. However, next week you guys are up against Shadow Z or Shadows or however you pronounce their team name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some, someone figure that out for me, please. But please, <laughs> they're they're definitely another one of the teams that's being looked at. You know in these power rankings in sort of the general opinion as one of those top teams on around the same tier as, you know, maybe like Horizon and Predictive Gaming. Um, how are you feeling going into that matchup, you know, compared it's to this one? Same as this week. Same as this week. I, hey, it's just another team. 
They ain't. They're not anything special. I'm just gonna say that. So y- y'all aren't gonna sc- practice your scrims? You're just ah, gonna... we'll, we'll scrim this week. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you know, some people are a little busy this week. We're like, ah, oh, whatever. It's fine. Look, you, you said same as this week. We didn't practice. We just came ah, in. Nah, so we'll, I, we'll I just assumed like, that's what you meant. Like, ah, people just, have like, oh, stuff okay. going on. Answer, right, it's like, yeah. Man, I, let me get some of that confidence juice y'all got because I need it. <laughs> yeah, definitely Chilling gonna be. Here. Definitely going to be an important matchup. You're in the mid lane specifically against Jenka, who is, you know, Shadow Z's sort of exception player. He's sort of, I'd say, their star player. Um, so it's definitely going to be, you know, playing into a mid focus team might be a little different. I assume you're going to have the same confidence coming into oh, yeah. the team in the one v one. Can can I expect that you're going to gap him? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. I I haven't played a single mid laner in this league that I've thought's better than me. So I'll wow, that. Ooh, that, okay. we may have, we may have dropped, we may have dropped a couple that. games in the first two. I yeah yeah, go for it, clip it. I don't care. Both of them, both the first two mid laners played against. Yeah, they weren't good. Just okay. I'm, I'm absolutely loving the energy of this interview. Me Normally, they're not this fun. But, me too. Yeah. But um, uh, Matt, my question, uh, my next question for you is, um, what about your thoughts on the um, game two draft? You know, when you saw them grab the Jinx, Gwen, Thresh there, and then they rounded it out with the set and Echo. What were your, uh, what was going through the comms as you guys picked that, and what made you decide to pick the Kindred Vigar and Lucian Nami um bot lane as well? I mean, we were going in, we planned on taking Lucian Nami if they first picked Jinx, so we were fine with that. Okay. Uh, with the Vagar Kindred, it's just kind of late game assurance. And the, again, the mid laner wasn't that good. So I knew I could get away blinding Vagar for whatever he wanted to pick. I was surprised by the Thresh pick. I thought he was just going to play Sona again, to be mm-hmm. honest. But I, nah, I don't know. And, and what was going through um the comms and what was the energy like when you guys, you know, the Jinx, or not Jinx, I'm sorry. Well, Jinx was, I think, like, Three and O or four and O in the early game, and Gwen was like three and O, especially after that first blood that um, the Gwen got on your jungler there. So, what was like the feel as you guys were in the early game and you know down a, about maybe two to three k gold? Uh, you know, it, early game kind of ha- eh, stuff happens. We mm-hmm. just played a little bit, and it it happens. Uh, our support was there. You know, he uh, he kept us all together with his positive words. <laughs> yeah, he's just the real homie on that one. And then yeah, we just have we beat them late game. It's skill gap. It's all it is really. And they lost an even fight or a fight they were even they were even ahead on. And mm-hmm. it was Speaking of support, did you guys like yell at Mister Potato for getting caught out a couple of times? Because he <laughs> really liked that tribush. I'm I, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I totally I like yeah, what he, was uh, going on with that. <laughs> He's a big fan of uh, vision control, you know. And yeah, he will do everything he can do. As a support to, should be, but like, listen, you, you know gotta get those visions. Nah, gotta get those him, vision score numbers up. Listen, anything <laughs> for the vision score. Absolute respect towards him. Kind of baby. Hey, he's all me. <laughs> he does sound like a pleasant player to play with. Um, oh yeah. But that's it. Do you have any other further questions? No, I don't. Do you? Uh. I guess maybe, do you have any sweeping statements for the rest of the league since that's sort of what we've been getting earlier? Any final words or maybe even shout outs as well? Hey, I'll give one shout out to a team that I'm excited to play against, uh, the Grinchy Goons. I love their profile pic or their their team logo. It's my favorite. So I'm excited to play against them. And uh, other than that, eh, it's Van Vigar. That's all I'm going to say. Or it's a loss. All right. Okay. Well, we heard it here first from uh, TDR Matt. Thank you so much for the interview and thank you for uh, coming out tonight. And once again, congratulations on your first match win, you know, clean 2-0. And I hope you guys can pull it out next week against Shadows, Shadow Z, mm-hmm. Shadows as well. And, um, you know, back up that spicy mid lane talk. I like it. Keep it up, man. I will. You need that. I You're going to need that confidence throughout the rest of the season for sure. Oh, yeah. All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So with that being said, um, you know, we're going to go ahead and turn uh, turn it down for the night. Uh, we hope you all enjoyed the show and we'll see you all next week for another round of the Classic Championship Series.